Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in episode 80 of Painting Masters. Today, we're looking at works by Janine Galizia, a, if I'm not mistaken, Belgian uh, watercolor painter. And one of the main things that I absolutely like about her work is this softness. Almost reminds me of a bit of William Turner's paintings, if you've gotten to see his work. But this I actually like better because it has a bit more of a solid foundation in my opinion, by my taste, this is highly subjective. Um, but a couple of things that are really interesting, and I think we can start with this painting, is one of the things I really like is how she plays in those, um, within a certain range of colors and hues. Um, so it's like she picks an area and then she plays all around that with different variations on that, different levels of saturation and also different hues around that area. So you'll notice a lot of interesting reds and browns and yellows. Uh, and then on the opposite side of the color wheel, blues and maybe a bit of a neutral kind of gray. Um, so I like how she uses colors a lot. Uh, and that's a big theme. And another theme we're going to see here is um, shapes and connections. Okay. Uh, and by the way, she does, I believe, teach watercolor. She has a YouTube channel. I highly recommend you check all of this out and generally check out her work and give it a go. Um, so let's look at another one here, a bit of a softer, um, softer work in terms of edges and shapes, right? Uh, but you'll notice one thing that I really like is connections. Um, so it's very evident that she has a good plan of like the wash she's painting. What is it going to be? Where is it gonna, gonna, what areas is it going to cover? And also um, what edges are gonna be there? And that's the thing you pretty much have to plan out. So when you look at all of these flowers, especially here on the right, it kind of melt into the background. That's, to me, that immediately tells like, this was highly planned. This is really um, someone who not only knows what they're doing on a technical level, but really know how to plan their work uh, and then execute based on that plan. Uh, and I think there's a very unique balance in our work that I really, really like. Now notice if we go back to color, and look at this bottom section here. This is so nice. Like just letting the paint flow down and it really keeps, uh, keeps the focal point intact. Um, it plays a very interesting kind of smoothening out of the frame of the painting role, which I really, really like. Now, as I was saying, if we're going back to the colors, same concept. Look at how she's traveling along a very specific group of hues. In this example, it's more towards the pink brown and the blues, maybe a bit of yellows as well. Um, but it's a very narrow selection of colors and temperatures, right? And that is very impactful. So let me give you one example of this, right? If you look at this uh, little cup here, teacup, whatever it is, um, this blue is not saturated at all right here here it's not that saturated but it looks so vibrant and alive because in the context of the entire scene and compared to the rest of the colors used it's quite strong so it really shows how you don't need explosive colors you don't need powerful punchy colors to get the message across in fact you dictate to the viewer this is the range we're looking at. And in this range, this is the color that's going to be most visible. And it actually works really, really well. Um, so this is like commanding the medium and the highest levels possible. Now, one more thing I want to mention, let's see if there's a good example here. Uh, not in this one, we'll probably have, uh, we have a bit of it here. So I'm not sure if that's the technique, but she also seems to be injecting some opaque soft pulls into the warms. We can actually see it here. So do you see all of these touches right here? You can see my cursor right in here. This is just opaque paint, but generally speaking, it looks to me and you can see it here as well. You can see it in her videos too. She likes to inject a bit of opaque opposite temperature color and it really enriches the just the, the combination of colors in the scene. Uh, so I quite like that a lot. Uh, here's one that was a little unique to me in, in the color scheme, but very much her signature when it comes to arranging the shapes. Um, so again, very much awareness of where are my shapes, where are my negative shapes, and I'm going to bring out using other shapes. Um, and then that contrast, right? Even if you look at this 
um, tire here, uh, you get these and then these highlights. Some of these highlights created pretty much wet and wet or when applying the paint first and then some added uh, later with opaque paint. There's a lot of grace and balance, uh, which I love. Now here is another one of these perfect examples of color range, right? Very narrow on the um, yellow, blue, greenish, almost very muted though, scale. Um, the colors here really remind me of Chen Chung Wei's work, like to the T, and I absolutely love these kinds of combinations. And then if you look at it in, in the context of, again, uh, connections, it's very clear, right? So you have this wall, and it's connected to the shadow of the people and the people themselves. And then there's another person here, possibly riding a bicycle or something like that. And then that person defines the crowd of people from behind, right? It's such a nice piece of work. And to create something this fun and this alive and this narrow, um, narrow scale, meaning it's not a big scene, right? It's just a couple of people. Um, and almost leave a lot to the imagination. It's just really pretty. Not to mention, you know, the light kind of leads us along into the dark and you see here white and then a bit of yellow for the lighter parts. And as we get to the shadows, it's more towards the green, blue, uh, which I really, really like. Uh, one more aspect is the color, the, the, pe the color, the pencil sketches. that we'll see in just a moment, but I really quite like these, um, these very loose pencil sketches almost gives it a work in progress feel to it, which I love. Um, same for the water here. This color combination isn't my favorite, like uh, a, a brown and or and, and uh, a brown purple and a green tends to not be among my favorites, but it does work in the context um, and it does tell a great story. The brush marks here even feel a little different to me, more more like a Zbukovic kind of style, uh, but very clear very clear message. There's no reason to overcomplicate things, right? It's a very clear lighthouse background. You don't need much more than this to tell you, oh, okay, there is a horizon there behind it. This is very, um, very clear, but very foggy. Like this is the lightest you can get away with it and still have it read well, which I'm sure was on purpose. It's a very skillful thing to do. Because with me, I either go too strong on these or I'll go too weak and then I have to do another passing, but she got it just right the first time. And I will remind you, she has YouTube videos. Highly recommend you check these out. Here's the perfect example of what I was telling you earlier. Look at all of these beautiful temperatures. And this is on the more colorful side, right? A bit more of an extended color scheme because you have a lot of the yellow, red, and blue. And then you can recognize all of the secondary colors in between, maybe the greens are a little more gentle, whereas the oranges and the browns and, and, and purples are a little stronger. But all of these, you know, uh, lilacs here, this especially, this looks a lot like a passing with opaque paints. Uh, this here as well, kind of like a mist or fog that is just fantastic. These uh, brush marks, the red and the yellows and the oranges, they're strong blues, right? The blues are quite saturated as well. This to me is beautiful. This is probably one of my favorites here, honestly. Um, even though I like the narrower color schemes, you know, with paintings that have all colors present in some form or another, you're running the risk of going more into the cliche painting style. But when you're good enough, like her, it's not really a risk, right? Uh, I do tend to favor, you know, the more limited color usage. Uh, it's not even the colors themselves that are used, it's more how they're mixed, right? Because there are pretty much all colors mixed together in the previous examples, it's just that they're mixed to be more muted, right? And here, she allows it to reach the more saturated blue, the more saturated orange, the more saturated red, right? Um, so yeah. And here's another fantastic one. So this was from uh, one of the IWS, if I'm not mistaken, competitions. Um, so it's a similar kind of a teacup for we've seen earlier. But again, the plan, the planning of the shapes is really, really nice. Especially like around here. Look at how the flowers just melt into the background, right? And you can tell there's a bit of control there. Look at the nuances of warm and cool, something I really enjoy doing recently, you know, just 
there's warm within the cool, within the warm, within the cool. It's just really, really nice and fun. And just to conclude here, we do have a bit of a process, kind of work in progress thing. So this is the finished painting, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and look at the sketch, right? So she shared a bit of her process, which is always fun to see. One of my favorite things is to see some processes. Uh, so Skoda brushes, they're collapsible. Uh, so I love these types of sketches, very loose, really invite you to let the paint do its thing rather than constrain it by tons of very rigid pencil lines, right? Um, and look at the palette. That tells us a nice story of the colors she's using. Uh, see a lot of these opaque warms that I really like. Uh, and then look at this. This is really cool. So kind of a study in preparation. Here is where the shadows are going to be. And I'm going to keep those shadows connected, right? And then some of the execution. So this was actually her turning it black and white to check the values, but the final result we've seen here. Um, so I think it's really fun to see a process and kind of a more complete thing. Check out her processes. She has a YouTube channel. I'm going to link everything down below. Highly recommend you check out her work. Um, and I, I'm really enjoying looking at other artists' uh, paintings. A lot of people have asked when the next uh, episode of Painting Masters is going to be. I'm, I've really enjoyed these. Uh, I just sometimes take periods where I'm taking a break from looking at other people's art. And I kind of just film whatever video I feel like, honestly. So when you remind me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I should probably film another Painting Masters. So this was this one. Uh, and I really hope you enjoyed this one. Again, nice birds outside. Fantastic works by these, this artist. And I cannot wait to bring you... Uh, more artists that uh, are, you know, some artists are really renowned um, and have been in many competitions and uh, sold a lot of paintings, but just aren't, don't have a huge following online. So I really love to find these artists and kind of bring them to light. Um, and there are artists with way less than, uh, than Janine's work, by the way, because she does have like 2000 on YouTube, which is a lot of people. Uh, so in any case, check her out. Thank you so much for watching. If you can, drop a like, leave a comment. Uh, it really helps uh, this video reach more people. And don't forget to subscribe if you still aren't. What are you doing? Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.